Afterward, the troopers asked me about life as a deputy U.S. marshal, and I told them some tales, a few of them true. Then the bugler blew taps, the duty sergeant put out the lamps, and I fell asleep like a milk-fed pup. The next morning I was back on the road before noon, moving up the valley of the Little Bighorn. By two o'clock I had reached the Crow Agency. The settlement turned out to be a scatter of government buildings, cabins, frame houses, and tents, accommodating everything from offices and shops to barns and stores. Teepees stood farther out, stark white in the sunshine. A pair of Indian boys, maybe ten or twelve years old, rode herd on a score of pinto horses down near the river as I passed. I greeted the youngsters with a smile and a good morning, but they only watched me, their dark eyes serious and guarded. I found the Indian agent not at his office but at his residence. The house was a substantial two-story dwelling that boasted two stone fireplaces, fresh white paint, and a broad roomy porch. A heavy-set Indian man, wearing a badge and a belted Colt's revolver, walked out to meet me as I rode up. Merlin Fanshaw, Deputy U.S. Marshal, I said, pointing at my own badge. I'm here to see Major Weed. The Indian policeman studied me a moment and then turned and went inside. A moment later, the agent appeared. Major Malachi Weed turned out to be an albino, or mighty close to it. He was doe-faced and clean-shaven, fat as a boar hog, with milky skin and strange pink eyes like a rabbit's. He invited me inside and offered me a chair near the fireplace. Weed's sitting room was heavily furnished in the Victorian manner, with overstuffed parlor chairs and a sofa, a mirrored hall tree, bookshelves, tapestries and plant stands, and various Indian-made decorations. Marshal Ridgway wrote me a week ago, the agent said. He told me he'd be sending a deputy. I understand you will be assisting City Marshal Brown at Medicine Lodge. I had to smile. Weed had known I was coming a week before I did. Yes, sir, I replied. Those are my orders. Weed studied me, his pink eyes intense. After a moment, he said, As you can see, I have a skin condition. Can't be outdoors as much as I'd like. As agent here, you might say I'm the chief paleface. His laugh was a thin chuckle. Weed took out a gold watch from his vest and snapped open the case. I'm afraid we'll have to cut our meeting short, deputy, he said. I have an appointment over at my office with some contractors. He closed the case and returned the watch to his pocket. Standing, he extended his hand. Thank you for stopping in, he said. If there's anything I can do to help you, please let me know. 